Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily for Thursday, September 8th. I'm Greg Lawless alongside Simon Borg, and it's the day after one of the wildest and craziest games we've seen in a long time here in MLS. A 4-4 draw at PPL Park between the Philadelphia Union and the New England Revolution. Now Simon, the Revs had a three-goal lead twice, and they weren't able to hit, hold on to it. Greg, if you were a fan at home watching this on Galavision, this was fairly entertaining. If you were a member of either the Philadelphia Union or New England Revolution, both teams starved for points in the standings, this was not fun. You're not singing the same tune this morning. Peter Novak upset his team, gave up four goals in the first half, said his team looked like an expansion team at times, while on the other side, the Revolution, Shalry Joseph, the captain, saying that how could it be that this team doesn't have enough quality to keep a 4-1 lead? He said even if it's against Barcelona, you should be able to. Uh, he's right. I mean, they were up 3-0, and then they were up 4-1, and you, the Revolution actually looked very good in the first half. They were moving the ball well. Also, they were very good on crosses into the box. AJ Soar is getting a goal. Zerka on his debut, also getting a goal for them. But the Union coming back, and it was Sebastian Latou who was really the catalyst in this one. Sebastian Latou playing it forward in this game. This has been a question of debate during the year. Not he's, for you, though. You've been saying he's it all been at, He's been at right midfield for a majority of matches as the Union have incorporated Velko Paunovic into the system. So that's relegated Latou a little bit to the right. This time, Paunovic and Latou playing up top, and you have to keep Latou around the box where he can score. He showed you why. Well, we should also mention Freddie Adu with his first goal since he's returned to MLS. A nice finish, a little interplay with Danny Mwanga. A lot of talk on Twitter and around there that Mwanga and both Torres and Adu also playing very well together. Although I must say, Torres didn't look to me like a 90-minute player. I mean, he had to take him out. He didn't have the pace to keep up in certain instances, but there's no question. The technique refined. That goal, a thing of beauty. Well, now that tightens things up in the playoff race, of course. Philadelphia still in the playoff mix as it stands right now. New England still on the outside looking in. Maybe they, if they'd gotten a win here, they could really make a push. But Simon, what does this all do for the playoff standings right now? I think it makes the Philadelphia Union against the Portland Timbers this coming weekend huge. Because Portland, with a win in Philadelphia, not only would quash all the talk about how Portland can't win on the road, but they would tie the Union mm. on points at 35 points, which no one would have seen coming after Philly led the East for most of the way. Well, Eric Bruner actually said exactly that, saying if we can get a win in this one, it's going to be a good push as they move toward the playoffs. Well, there's some other stuff going on up in the Pacific Northwest. In, in fact, there's going to be the Seattle Bartenders Night tonight. So if you're up in Seattle and you're looking to maybe have a drink tonight, go and find the Sounders and see what they're, uh, see what they're pouring. Hey, if you're Seattle right now, after the August you just enjoyed, you're, you're, lay, you're laying back, you're enjoying yourself right now. Good for them. They're, they're going to go have a drink, but they shouldn't count their chickens yet. Good two months left in the season. That's true. Well, also later on today, ET Radio will be on iTunes and here on MLSsoccer.com. Be sure to check that out. That's it for The Daily, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.